Hey everybody, welcome back to Ink and Effort, the podcast where we turn your writing dreams into a productive reality, one page at a time. I'm your host, James Fox, and I am fired up today. I'm fired up. So we did a thing, and I'm very excited about it, because we pre-recorded a, a, a crossover episode with Worlds Asunder, one of the other Book Career Network's um, podcasts, and... It's great. If you haven't checked it out, you should check out Worlds Asunder. It's it's phenomenal. Um, but we did a crossover episode where, you know, I was part of their show. They were part of my show. We kind of did this whole simulcast thing. Um, and and the fun part about it was that it was about building a writing community. That's what our episode's about today. And, you know, last week we talked to Tyler Burnworth about some really important stuff um, and, and in the edit process and the revision process and... You know, it's it's funny because I almost feel like I'm doing this podcast for myself. <laughs> I hope you're getting something good out of it too. But like every week, I'm like, oh man, I should try that. Uh, and it's and it's kind of a fun thing. So like you're gonna notice that you know the hat comes off, the lighting is different. That you know, we we pre-recorded this weeks ago, and I've just been sitting on it. And and it was episode nine, and I knew we were gonna have to wait, but. I think it's been worth the wait, and I think that you know the way that we've laid out the the episodes. I think that it makes sense to talk about it now because, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about is what you can do, right? Like the things that you can do uh, in your day to day about your space, your process, your tools, um, and 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 this is really about like what others can do for you, and I, I can't emphasize enough how important a writing community is. Um, when I first started out, I was working in a vacuum. I literally started my the Soul Saga in a Starbucks. Uh, page one, you know, chapter one, page one was in a Starbucks. I uh, not even in the town that I that I lived in. It was just a, a random Starbucks. I and I, I set my laptop down. I started writing. I said, you know what, I'm going to be an author. Um, and I, and I think I got maybe four or five pages in, and then I was like, this is dumb. This is never going to happen. Um, and it wasn't until I really started piecing together, talking to other authors and piecing together that community that I realized, hey, you know, I, I can do this. Like this, I, you know, this is something that I can do. Um, and, and the momentum built in, you know, eventually I just was writing and that was it. Um, but it's, it's funny how... And and you'll see this in the in the episode. You know the the two guests that we have today are actually part of my writer community. They're they're part of the of the people that I talk to daily. I mean I this is not like I reach out once a week or we have. I mean, I mean you can do that. I have I have writer groups that only meet weekly. Uh, I have some that only meet monthly, um, and then I have author friends that I check in with you know a couple times a year. But the the important thing is that you have a community, and and I think that what. What fascinates me about it and, and, and why I think it's so important is that it's that friendship, it's that camaraderie, it's that, that being able to just say, hey, you know, I, I didn't get anything done this week um, or I killed it today, right? Like being able to, to, to have that support when you need it, but also celebrate the victories when you have them. I think I mean, we've talked about this, celebrating the small victories is very important and having that community that gets it, right? Like, yeah, you can go to your mom, you can go to your partner, you can go to whomever, your friends, and you can say, hey, I finished my book today. And they'll be like, oh, cool. <laughs> you know, like so many people think that what we do is a hobby, right? That, it, that it's not real work, that it, well, my camera is really freaking out today, isn't it? Um, you know, that, that they're like, they're not impressed, right? We almost get the sense that they're not really impressed. And it's not everybody. I mean, some people know what's going on, but... Um, it's different when you tell a group of writers, you know, you have like 20 writers in a, in a chat room, I finished my book today. They get it. Like they know, you know, finished my manuscript. I'm pouring that drink, you know, um, they get it. Like, and, and, and I think that you need that. I think that you need that understanding uh, because it's a tough job. We've talked about this. This is not an easy career. This is not something that, that is for the faint of heart. This is tough. So having the ability to have, you know, people surrounding you that, that, that understand and that can celebrate those victories with you, I think is very important. And our two guests today are, are no stranger to that. They're part of this writing community that I talk with daily. I mean, we, we are in a chat room that just pops off all day, every day. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I mute it an hour at a time here and there because I'm, I'm focused and I, I, you know, the, the, the funny memes are just flowing too hard and I can't handle it. I gotta, I gotta kind of step back and focus, but then I always go back and, and read everything. Um, 
and try to chime in or whatever and, and hopefully interrupt somebody else's workflow. Uh, that's, that's part of the fun, right? So the, but the point is, is that it's a daily thing. Like these are my friends. These are people that I, that I, you know, it, it's not just work stuff. I mean, I, you know, very much share personal stuff, you know, personal struggles and personal trials and, and victories and, and, and everything in between. Um, so it's, I think it's good for you. I, I think from a, just from a, a, a standpoint of, of your mental health uh, and your career health, I think that's important. I think that it's good to have people to, to hold you accountable. Um, but also I think it's good to have people there to just kind of hold your hand when you need it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it's true. Um, but anyway, this is a fun one. Like I said, it's pre-recorded, so you know the hat's going to disappear. My hair is actually going to be done. I think I'm wearing the same shirt though, so... You know, um, it's, it's, I, I tried, okay. I, I thought about doing my hair, but I just decided that it wasn't worth it. Um, without further ado, let's kick into episode nine, building a writing community with our special guests. All right. So I'm going to welcome, welcome Shady and H.Y. Gregor to the, to the, what? What? I saw the what? hesitation. What's my name, James? Oh, you know what? Your name flashed on the thing and it bothered me for a second. I don't know if that's the recording that we're using. So everybody will notice this is a different format today because we're doing two people at the same time. And this is our crossover episode. Hey, nice. So um, we're talking about writer communities, which, as you can see, we're special. <laughs> um, lots of jokes, lots of uh, lots of off color humor and lots of support. One of the things that I love so much about the writing community is uh, it's very supportive. It's it, like, almost like creepily so sometimes where like we all jump in and help out each other in, in ways that like I, I've just never really experienced in the film industry. And I'd say the film industry is also pretty supportive, uh, but it also has this like undercurrent of competition. So uh, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves really quick. Oh, man, that was a cool mug. What the heck was that? Bring that back. Yo. Yeah. Um, is that available somewhere? Uh, I got it at the Renaissance Fest in Damn Santa Fe. Damn it. So that's a no. Okay. Um, all right. It might be. Might well, still be there. I, I want one because all I've got is this thing. And uh, all it has in it is water, which is not exciting at all. All right. Let's introduce yourselves. All right. So I'm, uh, I'm Shady David Shadoin. Uh, I'm one of the hosts from Worlds Asunder. I'm an author. Uh, I'm a military pilot and honestly, just a generally shady guy. It's both a moniker and a descriptor. So nice. Um, I'm Haley H. By Gregor. Um, I am an author primarily writing fantasy, epic fantasy and urban fantasy, and recently a podcast co-host because I also co-host Worlds of Sunday. So. Nice. All right, let's talk community. What do you think, if you had to put like one word to what the benefit of a of the writing community is, what would it be? If you hyphenate it, and I don't think it's technically hyphenated, found family. Sure, we'll hyphenate it. Whatever, I like it. I'm just making up words as authors do. <laughs> That's what we do. It's what we get paid to do. Yeah. That's a job. I was gonna say fellowship because that's okay. sufficiently Tolkien-esque to me. Nice. I like it. So I'm going to, I go with one that I think is most important to me and that's accountability. Like I find that having people who are like emotionally invested in what I'm doing and how I'm doing as a creative is so motivating to me. Like I have people check in with me, like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Where's your work at? And I think that that accountability is both like a pressure that I need Right. Like, I don't want to be like, I don't know. I've been playing this video game for like two months and it's great. <laughs> you know, like, I want to be able to tell them that I'm doing words. Um, but I also find that, uh, I don't know, it just feels nice to that people care. I mean, how, do you think that a writing community helps, you know, this fellowship, this found family that you have? Do you think that accountability helps you in your writing? Uh, to, to some degree, right? Like it's, there's always, there's always that <clears throat> we, so this is going to be both a good and a bad, right? You're almost always comparing yourself to, to all your friends at that point. You're, you're always, you know, like we, we all are a part of the Chris Kennedy publishing group chat. Um, 
And so we kind of see each other's progress as we go, as well as everybody else's. And that's where where we kind of run into like, like me, I don't have as much time to write during the day as other people do. Right. And so I'm watching everybody else get it into gear, which means that now I have to get it into gear. But I have to do it like towards the end of my day. Um, and my word counts aren't going to be the same. And so for a little while I was having, you know, I was both motivated to write, but also having issues with like, oh, I'm not quite keeping up. But being able to discuss with people too, like where they were at previously, you know, where, what they were, what they were doing, how they were doing it. Um, that's a little different. Uh, not, not so much different, but like, it's a nice balance to have. So like it is both accountability for getting the stuff done, but also like you, you, you get to learn from others' mistakes, right? And swear at certain people when they say that they write 22,000 words in a day. I'm real supportive, hey. but also, <laughs> <laughs> also screw you, man. <laughs> Sorry. They're not yeah. good. They're not good words. They're just lots of them. There's English there. That That's the important part there at the beginning. Um, yeah, I think the accountability piece of it is huge because otherwise writing really can happen in a vacuum. Uh, you can literally not talk to anyone and still be working and you can not make any connections or have anyone to talk to. Um, but when that happens, I think that you lose a lot of perspective on your work and your productivity. Um, and so having people that you can kind of check in with and say, hey, you know, actually having a really bad day, does anyone have any advice? Or I've rewritten the scene. Ike and I both did this. We started our books. We felt we started our books in the wrong place. So it's okay. I'm going to go back and start over. And then there's a whole group of people who have said, hey, I have done that same thing. You are not alone in this struggle. Okay. Um, but just like Shady said, there's also that aspect of someone wrote 10,000 words today. And I, unlike Shady, have a lot of time to write right now. And so when I'm not hitting you know, the goals that I have for myself, I have to not beat myself up and choose to be inspired by my peers instead of getting jealous or, you know, beating myself up for not hitting the things that, that I'm trying to accomplish. That, that's my next question is like, it, do you get a motivational boost from seeing what other people do? Like, you know, we are part of the Chris Kennedy publishing group and we, I mean, that is the chattiest group. I've got to mute it most days because otherwise that's all I'll do. Right. Um, but, but I, like, I do, I do like go in and read everything and like see how everybody's doing. And I'm like pumped for everybody. Right. Like I, I get, I get pretty jazzed when, when I find out that people are putting words down. So like, do you also feel that or is it, is it just kind of like pressure or do you, do you get motivation from it? I think for sure it's motivating. I'll jump in first, I guess. I am so fortunate and you know, all three of us are so fortunate to be associated with some super incredible authors right now. And they all have different strengths. Um, some of them are awesome at marketing. Some of them are super fast writers. Other people do outlining really well. And all of those minds kind of coming together and sharing notes and making comparisons is awesome. And I love you guys. And so the more you guys have stuff to celebrate, the more I have stuff to celebrate. Um, and the other piece of that is that this is an industry where we are told over and over and over again that it is so hard to succeed that you're never going to make it. You're not going to make a living at it. You have to do all of these impossible things and it can sometimes get really negative. And so seeing people who are kicking ass and doing awesome is really, really inspiring. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I touched on it a little bit too, where it was just like, it, it helps that we're friends, right? Cause if, if you didn't know these people, it, depression i guess um where you are just just not cool with not keeping up right and because we have author friends in the author community uh we don't we don't go into that spiral so often you know we're, we're everybody is supporting everybody you know it's the the rising tide lifts all ships you know um and and John Osborne's fa favorite, like so sail we all. Um, I love that one. Right, yeah. but the but that but that's the thing is that like none of us can produce at a pace that satisfies readerships every month. Right, there are a few people who who can do pretty close for their own particular readership, but um, for the most part, most writers can't, and so yeah. we need each other to 
to, you know, to fill in the gaps too. So it's, it is that kind of a nice thing where you're like, oh man, it's really cool that you wrote that book. And I'm so glad it's doing well because I'm writing something in a similar genre. And since we're, we're associated, like maybe we can start, start doing that. And, and fans are always looking for something new and they don't want to be just on one author too. Right. So like there's the business side of it, which is like, yeah, we, you know, fans love it when you, when you guys get to work together, but we've all worked in shared universes um, where it's, there's also that, that idea of, man, it, it makes it real easy for us to, to help each other out and to cross pollinate fans yeah. and to give fans more of what they want all the time. Yeah, absolutely. But let's, let's pivot a little bit and talk about feedback and criticism. Cause like, I know I've gone to the channel and been like, Hey, what do you guys think about this? And I, I've gotten some really mixed stuff sometimes, you know, like there have been a couple times where I've put, been pulled into an aside to be told off for what I was doing. Right. And I've walked away going, dang, okay. And it was gentle, you know, it's very nice. Um, I'm sure the person who did it is going to watch this and you know, I appreciate you. Thank you. It was, it was well received, but like I walked away going, dang, I'm not going to ask that again, <laughs> you know? Um, so what do you, what do you think the, is our value in like giving and receiving feedback? Like, do you, you, do you do that? Like, how do how does that play into the the idea of a writer's community? Are you wanting to talk about feedback groups or writers groups or no, no, like just any any kind of community? So like feedback groups, writers groups. Like we, you know, we're talking almost exclusively about you know the CKP channel, but you know, like yeah. just any kind of community. Um, like I'm in a several mastermind groups where that's all we do is criticize each other, and although it's very beneficial. It can be hard sometimes. Like I, you know, I, I don't like I don't like it when it's my week to present, and I just walk away going, "Well, I don't think anybody said anything nice." <laughs> so you know, pick pick one that you'd like to talk about. Shady, you want to take it? You want me to go? If you get something, go ahead. I'll got all the things. You did, um, you did writers groups and stuff, so that was I. I did. Yeah, I have done smaller writers groups where we did a chapter a week. I've been involved in bigger things like superstars. Uh, where there's a lot of community there. I've done things where I'll send off manuscripts in like 25,000 word chunks, or I'll do full manuscript swaps. I think though, you guys both know this, I'm preaching to the choir, learning how to accept criticism and take it in the right vein and then sifting through it and determining what's valuable and what isn't serving the manuscript and deciding how to make changes is one of the hardest things craft-wise about writing uh, because so many people are maybe going to read your book and you're not their writer. They're not your audience. And so I recently experienced this where I read somebody else's book that was a genre that I don't typically read. And objectively, it was an awesome book. It did not reach my expectations as a reader because I had a different genre that I wanted it to be in my head, even though I knew that it wasn't. And so I had this moment where I was like, I really like this book, but there's this thing that isn't working for me. And I don't know how to communicate it in a way that's respectful without saying that, you know, I'm tearing the manuscript apart because I enjoyed reading it. It was great. And so when you get feedback like that, I think learning to take it with a grain of salt and weigh things out is really, really hard. And then learning when someone really is just out of line, which happens sometimes, being able to walk away, <laughs> which is way easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so like, you get your like formalized groups, right? Your masterminds, your, your writers groups, that kind of thing. But the, then like having author communities where you guys are friends, it's sometimes a little bit more informal, right? Like you don't always, you're not always expecting critique or feedback. Um, my, my co-author for my first novel, Casey Azell, like she and I, we, we do that a lot for each other's work. If we, if we have time, right. Uh, now granted, half the time I've sent her stuff is usually something dealing with something she's already written for or, she, and she's asked me to write or we're writing together. So like about how, you know, half the time we're doing that is because we have, we, we kind of have to check each other out because we're writing the same thing. But, um, but at the same time, the, 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 the group that we have with, uh, at CKP, right? Like, you can kind of like, and I know you were like, yeah, I got chided for the one question, but uh, I wasn't that harsh. I'm just, just <laughs> uh, I mean, you were, but it's okay. 
See, I cried. I'm, I cried a little. Usually, usually when people start asking for advice, I sh I either shut up or I start being real snarky because I don't, I'm not <laughs> experienced enough Never. to give people advice on anything. Um, but <clears throat> the the bigger thing is is that like we do, you, you will find somebody who's willing to help you out, right? Um, and so when you know we're the formal writers groups, you kind of like you always have to treat it objectively as best you can. You can't kind of let emotions cross. Even with your friends, you, you can't always let your emotions cross that line. Like you might feel hurt or you might feel attacked sometimes based on it, but you got to remember that they are just trying to help you better the story in the way they think they can. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really like for me, uh, having been, <laughs> being a military pilot, like, I get critiqued all the time for stupid stuff. And like, I just, I grew up with that, you know, I, I, that's, that's the real joke is I, you know, I, instead of deciding to grow up, I became a pilot. So it means I get treated like a toddler all the time, but we became writers. We understand. Yeah. yeah. yeah I only but cried then, for like three days based off of your <laughs> criticism, Shady. It was only like three days. It's fine. But Obviously I, I didn't you. do my job well enough. It should have gone at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, so it's, so it is nice to have that, like the the background where you've got people who are really good at other things, to help you critique different parts of it. Whether it's your marketing aspects, whether it's you know your stylization, maybe there's like a scene that just doesn't quite hit right, and people find it jarring, and they they can give you that feedback before you push something out in the world. Um, that doesn't you know that draws the ire of fans, and therefore draws negative more negative reviews versus be, becoming more positive. So one of the things that I really am trying to do with ink and effort that, that I think is, is important is just encourage people to have their butts in the chair, hands on their keys, right? Like just like that Branderson, Brandon Sanderson by chalk philosophy. Like if you're not there pounding the keyboard, you're not writing, right? Like, uh, do you think that being part of a community like CKP or like a mastermind benefits that, or do you think it's a distraction? I think it depends on the community. Let's I, say you find a good one. Spend the good ones. Look for people who have the same goals as you. And that is how you find the good ones. Um, and that can be publishing goals or genre goals. Um, you don't want the group. You don't want everyone to be the same in the group. But if you are trying really hard to take writing seriously, surround yourself with people who want to take writing seriously. And I think that's the most important part to finding the right kind of group. Because we, within CKP, everyone is pretty professionally focused. And that is hugely helpful. Because if I'm, if I'm screwing around, I'm supposed to be writing, and I hop in the chat, and someone says, hey, I just wrote 5,000 words, or hey, my book came out today, I'm like, I should be doing that. And it's, you know, it's an imaginary, positive peer pressure experience where, you know, you see the progress being made, and you get chided a little bit, even if someone isn't telling you off, right? So I think that can be great. I get real lucky that I haven't had like the, the writers group nightmares sometimes where you have a bunch of newer writers trying to, to, to spur each other on and you guys have wonderful ideals, but really it's just like you get together just so you can call yourself writers kind of thing. Um, I, I haven't had that experience. I, I kind of skipped a couple steps. I got dragged into kind of the, the more semi pro leagues before I, before I had to really what, what's the, what's the word I'm trying to think of pay my dues. Right. Um, and I went, through but I have heard for four years. I have heard. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have heard plenty of plenty of stories where it's like, if you are surrounded by that group, that's, that is dragging you down. Like nobody's getting anything published. Everybody's just trying to be perfect and nobody really wants to actually push out their work. They just kind of get together and talk about writing. Maybe it's time for a change of scenery. Um, you know, I got lucky to have like Chuck Gannon around, you know, Dr. Charles E. Gannon help, you know, that I got to meet almost first thing. The first time I got together with a bunch of writers. Yeah. Uh, I got lucky that Kevin Eikenberry, was at superstars when I was there and got to meet him. Uh, I got lucky that I got dragged into CKP to begin with, um, riding on Casey Azell's coattails as I always do. But the, uh, <clears throat> it, it does help a lot to have that group who is professionally focused, who is 
focusing on getting work out. Um, but they're also like, it's not just the writers in a high tower writing for themselves and then suddenly like peeking out and talking to each other just long enough to steal each other's ideas. Right. This is where we, we foster growth. We, we help each other out with, uh, with marketing and stuff. So it is a nice, uh, it's a nice thing to have in your corner and you need to find a group like that. And if people are better than you, that's good. Right. Yeah. Because that's where you learn the most. And, and that's, right. that's not just true with writing. That's true with anything. You want to be with people who are better than you because that's how you get better. Right. Exactly. So let's so, talk about like the types of, go ahead. I, no, go I'm for so it. sorry. No. Uh, my whole career is kind of a testament to what Shady was talking about actually. So my like the, the very short clip notes on my career was I wrote in a vacuum for four years, I wrote four novels. I got really good, but I wasn't doing anything with them. Um, once I met Chris Kennedy and started getting involved with uh, the Elders Legacy Project and a couple of other things, that's how I got my first book deal. And I was adopted by CKP before I ever published anything with them because Chris asked me for a manuscript and I sent it to him and he said, hey, this isn't what I'm selling. I, you know, it's not in my wheelhouse, but I like the book, hang out. Um, and so they very much brought me into the fold and it was a year before I even had a short story come out with them actually, but it was exclusively because of that, that I now have a trilogy deal with Chris Kennedy publishing because of the community. And if I hadn't branched out and sought other writers to powwow with and to learn things, I might still be writing in a vacuum. So I think it's hugely important to, to take those steps. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think that one of the things that I struggle with is I'm, you know, very extroverted extrovert, right? So I'm just constantly looking for people and I like to help, right? So I know you both look shocked. <laughs> um, so do you think that there's a benefit to having like a, like a face-to-face -face writing community? Or do you think that everything that you need out of a writing community, you can get online? Uh, so my answer to this is, is much bigger than just writing. I think you always need a face to face in general, right? Like people can exist online really well, but the problem with online is that you can hide a lot of things, right? So it's you, we, what you're missing from online communities, even when people are being talkative is the actual like nuances of facial expressions, the, the way they hold themselves. Um, there is an inherent trust with meeting people face to face that there is just isn't when you meet them online, right? Like I knew most of the CKP peeps from while I was in Japan and I'd never met them in person until, uh, until I went to superstars for the first time back in February of, uh, 23. And they were like, while they were really accepting of me being in, in the chat group, since none of them knew me, they don't know how to, how to, how to, you know, take the things I say or what I will take in stride as well. Right. So they're very cordial. They're very polite, things like that. But once I got to know everybody, like now it's, you know, game on, you know, all shots are fair. So it's, they, there is, there is something to be said you know, I, I'm lucky here that Haley had set up a group of the writers and I just happened to to fill in after she left. I got um, you. And so you I get to see a lot chair. of these guys in person a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it is immensely helpful because even even if you're not talking business, right, like they kind of they all know kind of what you're going through. You guys could, you always have a common point of of the, you know, you, you always have a, a common denominator, sorry, not a common point. And so that, that makes it really easy to, to kind of go on. So now like Mark Stallings and I, we play, you know, and a few of the others, like we play, play games. Um, that's a big piece of the writers that, that I hang out with here. We all do game nights every once in a while. And that helps us relax, recharges the creative batteries. And if we want to talk business, we can't. So. Or if we want to complain about business. That happens too. Yeah. I think that in-person helps foster reputations just as much. I, I totally agree. Shady stole some of my thunder. Everything that he said is crucial, I think. Um, but there's a level of community when it comes to getting invited to new projects 
in publishing and other things, reaching out, making, you know, new co-author friends that want to work with you in the future or people that want you to write in their world. The invitation that I got to write in the Malaysian Accords only existed because I met John Osborne in person and he was, for whatever reasons, interested in working with me. Um, so there was a personal connection there that existed prior to the writing relationship that occurred. And if he thought that I was the worst or if he'd never met me in person, he probably never would have made that offer. And then, you know, I went through the whole process of writing him a pitch and a sample chapter and, you know, everything for the trilogy and, and all of that. So that came after. But those kinds of human touch points can be hugely, hugely helpful. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually accidentally made a writing group in my small town at the Starbucks because I was just there every day with my laptop uh, because I was getting new power installed in my office and needed internet. Right. So I was just like, I'm going to go to the Starbucks and it's eight, kind of 8,000 people just below Yosemite national park. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm writing and it's like, somebody walks by and it's like, Hey, are you writing a book? I'm like, yeah. They're like, I'm an author too. I'm like, Oh cool. How many books you have published? I'm like I have eight, nine. And I'm like, Oh, you have more than me. Sit down. Right. <laughs> and now there's like 12 of us that get together every Saturday. And that's all we do is we sit. Well, it's not, that's not true. We, some days, if we're doing it right, we sit there for three hours together and nobody says a word. Everybody's just typing. And then at the end, we're like, how many words you get? How many words you get? How many words you get? And we just kind of, you know, it, it's kind of fun. We kind of do like a sprint together. And then there are some days where it's just like somebody's boyfriend is being a douche. And it's like, I don't know what, what I, we're rated actually. So like so his boyfriend's being a douchebag and it's like, we just sit there and we give them advice for three hours and let them vent and cry. And we all like group hug at the end, you know? Um, and there are days where like, I'm just being my extroverted self and take over. And I don't even know what I talk about. Nobody probably knows what I'm talking about, but I talk for three hours and we get nothing done and everybody complains at me afterwards. But you know, it's like, we, I think that face to face is very important. So I'm glad you guys said that I was ready to argue with both of you. Sorry, James. I, I hate I blacked the out there. Things. What did you say? Yeah, exactly. It's fine. Just kidding. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have even done some of our podcast interviews in person when we've had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we've done, I think, three in person. We're getting ready to record one more in person in a couple of weeks just to mix things up. And, and it's easier to interview people like that. It feels more organic. It, it's nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. So let's let's talk about like what resources people have to find groups. I mean, obviously like if we, if you're with a publisher and they've got a group, that should be a no brainer, but like, let's say they're not, let's say you're just doing the indie thing or you're just getting started. What resources have you used or, or have you heard that people use for finding community? I mean, the simple one isn't really a resource, right? It's just a strategy, which is networking, right? Yeah. If you, if you go to in-person events, meet people, and, and for the introverts out there, that's a tough, that, that is a tough hurdle to overcome, right? Like, but realize that for the most part, I'm not going to say always, but for the most part, when you go to introduce yourself to authors and you're like, Hey, I'd like to ask you questions about being an author sometime, right? Most people aren't going to turn you away immediately. They're, they're going to be like, yeah, cool. You know, let's, let's sit down and chat, whatever else. There are a few people out there, you know, if you're, if you're aiming for kind of the Jim butchers of the world, or the Brandon Sanderson's and you don't like, they don't already know you or like you. It's uh, it's, they're probably not going to be, you know, so chill about it, but Have if you're time. going, yeah, it, 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 even if it's like not your publisher, if you're just going to other authors at different cons um, and, and that's one of the things that I would tell, like building your building an author community is going to cons, right? We, we have several friends that we only get to see in person when we go to cons, you know, you being one of the them. Time. Sir. Yeah. James I was, I was hoping <laughs> you're like, for sure. <laughs> but the you last know, time we got like, together, on, we got to Liberty watch con. the, uh, the chiefs beat the 49ers. So I, it was, it was an awesome time. It we was, had it a was great time. Animated. It was <laughs> really, that was yeah. when, that was when James was crying and it was probably longer than three days. <laughs> It was more like three months. I'm still crying. I still cry myself to sleep every night. I have nightmares of that last touchdown and Shady looking at me and laughing. <laughs> it was no, that was a great time. I loved it. I loved it. I thought if I had to watch, my, if I had to watch my team lose, I'm glad it was with you two. It was, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. We all had a blast. Like, yeah. 
yeah win, win or lose it, it was a good time but that, that's the <laughs> thing is that this that stuff only comes about because you know you happen to come out to superstars right right um and we we were both there and i i live in town so you know it was it was good for us to be able to get together and and have that time together um but there there are people that i've only met like at liberty con uh or at some other you know what would technically be a fan convention versus a writer's conference um but going about and talking to people and and doing the the bar con right the unofficial get together at the bar whether you drink or not that's that's where you're making the money and that's where kind of like Haley was saying you start building your reputation and then producing work for people producing good work being willing to kind of push yourself out there a little bit like people will help you with that so long as you're willing to take the first step and meet them halfway yeah um most places have regional writing conferences a lot of them if we want to be really specific about a couple of if people are looking for ideas a lot of regional writing conferences will have a workshop day where you have the opportunity to get together in small groups and work on a pitch or a you know first chapters they'll have different things that you can sit down and do and if you are more introverted that's a really great way to meet people because it can be you know a group of five to ten and you have common goal you have something to talk about already and then you made them you make those friends on the first day of the conference and you have someone to wave to in the hall on the you know the next day and that helps a ton um they're also really valuable because they're often with agents or editors who really know their stuff so regional writing conferences uh, if you can avoid doing them online you get a lot more out of them if you're there in person um and then if you're a spec fic writer which we all are conventions like liberty con we have mars con out here in virginia beach uh where the guest of honor this year was larry korea so it had a really good show showing um next year it's gonna be gonna be christopher rocchio who writes the sun eater series and so there's a bunch of authors that go on panels and stuff and if you're a fan awesome but if you're an author go sit on a panel and approach someone after and say hey i loved what you said about this you were on a panel that's something that really interested me can we talk can i have your business card can i give you mine and that's a great way to start a conversation too um yeah nanowrimo i know there was a thing with nanowrimo i don't know what the controversy was but i do know that that is another forum you're making a face james like maybe you wouldn't recommend it i'm not i'm not remembering i just know there were some issues i had a lot of friends who got into writing through that forum but it's been a minute i love the idea i love what nanowrimo used to be um okay. and i'm not bashing it in any way it's just it's changed a lot okay. and i think it's lost a lot of what it you know, like they they've made the rules so hard to follow that like, like all the like regional directors or whatever, and where they had like these little groups that like people like put each other together and like made these like fun little like teams to like NaNoWriMo together. That's all gone now. Like you, it's against the rules. You can't do that anymore and stuff. So it's like huh. it's okay. like they kind of like took the fun out of the box, and then like now it's just like they're more promoting like a vacuum writing. So I don't know. So it's gotcha. it's strange. Um, we, I just had a huge discussion at Imaginarium in Kentucky about NaNoWriMo and just how it's it's just it's changed into something that is unrecognizable to what it used to be. Okay. I will maybe not recommend that then and say call your local library and see if they have groups because that's another good place to look. I'm going to I'm going to throw out the social media stuff too. Um, we have a friend uh, Charlie Cox who is only connected to writing groups originally through okay. social media from being a fan of CKP um, of a lot of their books. Well, her, I, I think her husband more than her, but I can't. Oh no, remember. she's read all of them. They're yeah, they're she has read people. all of them. But they read. Yeah, so they're much both great. <laughs> and and we got to meet them. We were the first people to get to meet them in person, right? But that was that was she the lives thing. in was Oregon, like, and we went there for Thanksgiving, and she drove three hours north, and we drove three hours south so that we could meet her. Oh, and we awesome. had just known her on the internet for like a year and a half. So, <clears throat> but yeah. And so she found success that way because her fan groups were tied in with the author, the authors, which that community, the CKP community is really good about engaging with their fans. Um, and so if you go, if you go to Facebook or you're going to Instagram or whatever social media platform of your choice and you have author engagement, that is still another way to find, find a writing group, right? Like, we, we've talked a lot about the in-person stuff, but there there is something to be said with starting there. Now, granted, it took, you know, one, Charlie didn't really start getting into writing, I think, until the last two or three years. Um, but 
she got encouraged to write. She submitted multiple stories on different occasions. She finally got one pulled and published. Um, and now she's and written then, two books. Yeah, and, and now she's now she's co-written at least one book. Uh, she wrote a second one that's we're we're waiting to hear when it's going to get a publishing date. Um, uh, and then uh, what is it? What well, I had somewhere I was going with that. But yeah, so nobody had met her, and then we finally kind of like started. Hey, Charlie you should come out, come hang out. Right. And then Haley and I went and spent Thanksgiving out in Oregon last year and we got to meet her and that kind of encouraged that. Right. And, and that's really like, there is something to be said that like online makes it easier to find writers groups, but it also makes it easier to fall prey to, to, to not great groups, you know? Right. So you, you just got to kind of pick and choose. I'll tell you, like if, if you are paying money to be in a group, don't. don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Yeah. There are plenty Red of flag. groups out there that will take you in for free. Paying money to go to a conference, right? Because the writers' conferences, stu- superstars, authors' nation, like they've got price tags, and that's just that's a that's considered the investment to prove that you're serious. Right. Um, and if you're kind of on the fence about it and you don't think it's worth the money, like I'm not going to tell you, yeah, you're doing it wrong. No, not at all. Plenty of writers never went to any of these any of these conferences. Um, but finding a group that is free that doesn't charge you every time you want to ask a question, like that's important. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's great stuff. I mean, I, I am a big fan of community. Like I said, I, I think I'm in like 30 something groups. So like, that's what I do when I can't sleep at night is I'm just like catching up and like typing to everybody. That's too many people. That's too many friends. No way. That's just enough. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and the, the other thing I will say is like, if you, uh, if the idea of going to a con or like some kind of like, you know, writing event scares you, all you need to do is find a like extrovert that is willing to adopt. I, I always do that. I wind up finding like in, uh, introverts that are like, you know, cowering. I'm like, I'm going to be your friend. Come here. I want you to introduce you to these people, right? I will extrovert for you. So you don't have to. Um, and there's and lots those- of people who do that. There's an evolution there too, because I am very introverted. I'm not shy, but I'm very introverted. I'm very happy being the writer in the cave most of the time and not having to interact. And when I first went to Superstars, I knew one person there and she was an editor. She's an editor. So she was teaching and running around and, you know, hi, bye, Lisa. Oh, she was wonderful. Um, She took me to lunch the first day, but I didn't know anyone. And I had extroverts adopt me. I accidentally smashed someone's hand in my car door and he thought it was hilarious and then adopted me and proceeded to introduce me to a bunch of people. Um, And now I'm at a point where two and a half years later, I go to cons and I am now the person introducing new people to others, Uh, which if you had asked me in 2022, if I would ever be that person, I would not have said yes to that because it terrifies me. So uh, if you're out there and you're shy, and you're worried about these aspects of it, James is absolutely right. There are golden retriever extroverts, I'm pointing down because that's where you are on my screen, who will adopt you because we are so excited to bring new people into the fold and get new ideas. So. Right on. All right. Uh, tell viewers where they can find you, what you're working on, and what you're most excited about right now. Well, uh, shortly after we get done recording this podcast, we're going to record another one. So you can find us on Worlds Asunder. Uh, with James, the the best part is I think you're releasing this much sooner than we're going to be ready to release yours. So there, there's going to be a bunch of references, and a bunch of people are going to be like three months apart where they miss those references. This is this apart. is actually one of my like last episodes. So this is like oh, my sweet. like season sweeps. It's my second to last episode. So so wow. we can probably schedule it. We can yeah, let's we can schedule try to it. Hit them in the same week. So peek behind the curtain. We'll come out first, and then yours. Yeah. Peek behind the curtain. You get to you get to to watch how this plays out. Um, no, but you can find me at davidstoin.com. Uh, and pretty much all my social media stuff, you can you can bounce out from there. Uh, you can find me on YouTube on several different podcasts. And uh, if you find my my YouTube channel specifically, it turns out I'm the only David Stoin in the US of A. Uh, so I'm real easy to find. Uh, then you can you can find kind of the rest of my content. Uh, I had a recent release with companion to ghosts which that's a a nice little graphic of uh that was back in may uh that's currently july 
So you can go check that out on Amazon. And then this weekend, Haley and I both have uh, oh, Ashes of Encecia's um, Remnants of Empire. Remnants of Empire, the anthology coming out, uh, which is Casey Azell's newest space opera uh, multi author universe that she's pushing. So very Dune like, uh, but more character based. So sweet. All right, Haley. I am Haley H.Y. Gregor. You can find me on hygregor.com, and that will take you to my socials, my Amazon page, everywhere, just as a landing point. Also very easy to find. Um, my next project, like I said, I write mainly fantasy. My short stories are kind of all over the place because I've been fortunate enough to get invited to some super cool projects. But I'm currently working on an urban fantasy trilogy for uh, the Malaysian Accords. Uh, which is John R. Osborne's new sandbox series. Uh, he's got five books and I'm the first spinoff. It's been awesome. Um, and at the time of this recording, we are tentatively looking at fall releases for those. I am about a quarter of the way, a third of the way through the third book right now. So chipping along. Um, I'm really excited about Dragon Con right now. I, I don't know if this comes out of Dragon Con will have already been over, but I tripped onto a couple of panels. I'm not an attending pro this year, but I, I will be appearing at a, in a couple of places formally. Nice. So if you want to see me be incredibly nervous in front of a group of people, come see me at Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Good luck with everything. Thanks, I'll see you, I'll see you in chat. We'll see you, yes, very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> So there it is. There's our crossover episode. And what's what's interesting about that is that marks our ninth episode of this podcast. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. We've been doing it pretty consistently. And I think that I think that uh, we've got some really good stuff. I mean, the whole point of this podcast is to empower you, the author, wherever you're at in your author career and author journey, to have your butt in the chair, hands on your keyboard. And, you know, we haven't really even talked much about story. This is all about the process and the career, the business part, right, of of being an author. And I, I think that you gotta kinda figure that out first before you can really focus on the art of it, right? Like we all we all are drawn to this because we're storytellers. But that's not enough. You know, you have to have the process down, you have to have the workflow down, you have to have the ethic, you have to have the the drive to do it. Everybody who was a good storyteller would be an author if they could, but it's a tough gig, right? This is something we've we've talked a lot about. It's not it's not easy. So you can do things to make it easier, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're we're trying to we're trying to do some of the heavy lifting for you. So it's like, hey, here are some tools that you should check out. You know, here's what you should do for writing and revisions. You know, this is this is a these are some good angles to approach with that. You know, find out what you are good at and lean into that and then backfill with the rest. And I think that's part of where this power of your writing community comes in because people have been there, you know, people will offset some of your weaknesses and you'll offset some of theirs. Um, you'll have different takes on different things. You know, I, I think a lot of people kind of get stuck in this idea that like writing and storytelling is the only thing that we do, right? That's, that's, that's it. You know, I mean, when when I was self published, when I was you know independently published, I spent probably seventy five eighty percent of my time marketing, and and twenty percent everything else. So, and, and I'm not a marketing professional by any stretch of the imagination. You know, like I can I can put together some cool book trailers and you know I could write some copy, but you know like I don't I don't really know what to do or where to go. I'm not a I'm not an Instagram influencer or anything like that. So it's like. You, you, I spent most of my time just trying stuff, just, you know, researching, taking classes, uh, doing tests, you know, doing like field tests of different ads and, and measuring their metrics and looking at a bunch of graphs that I had no idea what stuff meant on it. And, you know, I didn't feel like an author. I felt like a junior marketing intern. <laughs> right? So, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how we, we do some of these things and we kind of get ourselves into this, this situation where it's like, hey, I'm going to be an author. I'm going to be a, a professional storyteller. I'm going to sell books. And then we, we start the job and it's like, oh, like, it's not just about writing books. It's, that's actually a very small piece of it. So, you know, I, again, just to reemphasize, I think the idea of having a, a writing community that you can kind of lean on and be like, hey, what mistakes did you make? What, you know, wh where can I be better? Like, I, this is what I'm doing. This 
Here's what the graph is telling me. I have no idea what it means. Does anybody here know what this, these words or acronyms mean, right? Um, and most of the time people do because they've done the same thing. Like, and, and they probably had a writing community help them. And if they didn't, then they took classes. And if they didn't do that, they did a ton of internet research. So, you know, I, I think that, sure, there's a certain amount of, amount of like hubris or ego that you have to kind of swallow to like, get into that and be like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I need help. Um, it's hard for me, you know, like I don't, I don't like it when I go into something. I just today, in fact, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm writing a, a short story. I'm not a short format person. I don't do short films. I don't do short stories. I talk a lot. I type fast. So, you know, for me whipping out a 10,000 word thing, I mean, that's, I'm just getting going. I'm just getting started. Like I, there's momentum behind me. So, and that's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to do a 10,000 word maximum. I wrote 13,000 words. So I'm like, shoot, you know, like I'm not done. Like I'm, I'm just getting started with the story. I just established my world and my characters. So, uh, I reached out to somebody who's really good in my writer's community about how to, how to do short story, short format stuff. And they immediately jumped on and helped me out. So, you know, that's, that's what we're talking about here. That's what, that's what you need. And I think that it's very important that you, that you lean into that a little bit and, and, and do what needs doing in order to, to focus on what you're good at. I mean, if you're great at the marketing or whatever, and you need story help, awesome. Find somebody who's great story. Look me up. We'll trade. You can market and my stuff and I'll help you with your story. I got a couple tricks. And once we go into season two, so next week is going to be our, our season finale, right? That's our episode 10. That's our first season in the can. Roof. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, be sure to share all this stuff too, right? That's not something we talk about a lot, but like, you know, if you find this helpful, share it, share it amongst your writers community that you're building, right? Um, subscribe to the book career network like do you know send a send a message to to the book career network and let them know that ink and effort is something that you enjoy doing you want to see more because i'd like to do more of these i'd, I'd like to get into for season two story here are some here's some cool things that you can do and and our next episode is going to kind of focus a little bit on that it's going to be a solo episode just me i will be the guest of the author uh, and we're going to talk about story we're going to talk about how we can keep our stories in a place where we can write them quickly, right? Don't overcomplicate them, get them out and, and get them selling, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to make money so we can keep doing it. That's it. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with this episode. I mean, um, there, that whole community that I'm part of, uh, not just our, our two guests, but that whole community is just amazing. So I, I feel very fortunate to, to have been, brought into that group and and i'm just I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes you should be too you should be excited about building a writer's community you should be excited about what it does to your career and you should be excited about where you're going all right keep writing keep pushing and remember it's the ink and the effort that brings stories to life again don't forget to subscribe like and follow us on social media uh for more tips and inspiration I'm james fox i'll see you next week